Some men see things and ask why, but I dream things that never were and say, why not? The words of George Bernard Shaw, they are appropriate to begin our special report, Climb Every Mountain. Imagine you're approaching the twilight of your life. You're in the middle of an incredible quest to reach the peaks of the seven summits, the world's tallest mountains. We have a man right here at home who's doing just that. His name is Gary Irvin, and here is his story. In the nooks and crannies of a tri-state woods, he walks uphill. And, uh, it's something that's called to me. Ah, this is uh, 40 pounds in my pack, and uh, another 60 pounds will be on a sled. That's what the tires to simulate, kind of the sled and the weight of the, the rest of the gear that I got to pack. Gary Irvin remains on his mission, pushing his fears aside. Uh, getting on top of a mountain like that uh, is almost an escape from it. You, you, you care about the people you climb with, you care about the Sherpa that are there to help you uh, get to the top. But the danger, the risks are still there. So I respect, you know, the danger. Uh, and the time, the, the time that I quit respecting it is when, when it will get me, so. He's climbed the tallest mountains on this earth. These peaks are in an elite club, the Seven Summits, from Kilimanjaro to Everest. The violence of the, the 50 mile an hour wind, the brutal cold, uh, just made, uh, made all of your senses just wide open and alive. The oddity of this memoir is timing. Where do you go from here? Uh, January 6th, I leave for Antarctica. Gary Irvin started the quest of his life past what most of us would call our prime. Consider this. Gary is 61 years old. Want to tell him to stop now? Good luck with that. I got to lay it all out and then I'll pack it. This gear plus my fuel, food, is going to be about 100 pounds. This is more than a story about a man climbing mountains. It's a love story. <laughs> Lisa Irvin has fretted. She has seen what this grueling ascent can do to a man, to a husband. So I had, I had both physical and mental type of scars. That's, that's what wanted uh, pushed me to go back, but it's also what scared my family. They saw, they kind of saw what I went through. My prayer the last time was just, not that he would summit, but that he would go as far as he could and then return home safely. Lisa and Gary Irvin married in 1984. The adventure began, raising a family, building the American dream, and going places, often looking up. But during the first Mount Everest climb in 2016, he came just 200 yards short of reaching the summit. So it was back home, back to training, climbing a high-rise staircase. Don't let anybody else define your own happiness, right? <laughs> Loading his backpack with his grandson, pushing his body to the limit, he was ready. But there would be a major risk during the second attempt on Everest. Uh, it was on our climb to Camp 2, the first time to 21,000 feet. It was real cold that night. Uh, I just had my grandson. I stayed up late the night before. Gary Irvin faced a day of reckoning. I uh, ended up freezing my larynx and pharynx. Uh, I couldn't speak. They sent me to uh, back to Kathmandu by helicopter. I uh, spent four days in the hospital. He recovered. You think that would be enough drama. But Gary wanted to go back and finish the climb. Why? Uh, a lot of people ask that. I wouldn't done. Several weeks later, Gary Urban climbed to the top and looked down at the clouds. I was uh, at 29,035 feet. You're above the, uh, most of the atmosphere. As I get home and I, I look at what I thought was important, and there's a very few things that actually are important. A man towing a tire and with a backpack on a logging trail, there always will be another peak on this earth to touch.